chat and I'm going to also grab the chat window. Ah, Peggy is with us. Hi, Peggy. That was great to see you. Thanks for being there. And John Jensen is with us on, on uh, Instagram. Great, John. Thank you for being with me. I'm way back at you. There we go. Okay. So I don't know if you could see that because you can't see the corner of my screen where it's got me, but I waved, John. Really, I did. Okay. So here we go. Uh, we are talking about the history of iridology. And that is actually a really important topic because if you don't know where you've come from, how do you know where you're going? Right? Super. Okay. So um, my name is Judith Cobb. I am a master herbalist, natural nutrition, clinical practitioner, certified iridologist, and certified comprehensive iridology instructor. And I would love to know where you are from. So regardless of what platform you're on, just give me a, a location of where you're from. And if you don't really want to tell me where you're from, make some place up just so we can have a conversation. All righty. And I'm watching a um, couple of computers plus my phone plus my screen to make sure that I can interact with all of you. Again, you know, I love it when people interact with me here because this is really an important thing for us to do. Now, as we do this, um, it's really important for us to know, oh, Escondido, woohoo. I want some of your sunshine, John. Send me, send me a jar of sunshine and some kind of a temperature that's anything above uh, let's say 50 Fahrenheit. Can you send me a bottle of that, John? I would so like that. Um, it's minus 10 centigrade here today, which you do the math to figure out how cold that is. <laughs> At any rate, so we, we need to know the basic history of iridology. It is really important. And we have to also, <laughs> thanks, John, appreciate that. We have to understand that iridology is not finished. It is an evolving science, and it's really important for us to keep up on those developments. And Peggy is joining us from Alberta. Woohoo! Actually, I know exactly where Peggy lives. And so, um, but iridology hasn't finished. But just a couple of years ago at an IPA symposium, a naturopath who'd been doing some research and correlating it to uh, 23andMe type genetic studies had shared with us something that he had discovered. And it's like one of the most helpful things that I've ever learned about iridology because of my focus with pregnancy and infertility. And it was just amazing. So this is a developing science and it's an evolving science. And we have to keep up with that. It is so sad to say that many iridologists are stuck in the past, and I mean in the dark ages. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I don't mean that in any rude way. However, being stuck in the past means you are not keeping up with what needs to happen and with how things have changed. And that means you can't give your clients or your family the very best there is. So iridologists have good intentions and I know they do and they are good people but they got to get current. We know that iridology is rooted in ancient history, in the ancient cultures of Egypt and India and China and Greece. We also know that science evolves. I mean, you probably weren't alive when they thought the earth was flat. I don't know. Are you really that old? Sometimes I feel that old. And so, um, but you know, the earth is not flat. We know that. We know the earth is not flat. We've learned that science evolved. And it's true that science evolves in every field, including, you know, whether it's medicine or research of different kinds or how to build buildings or, you know, how to, I live in, in the oil patch, how to drill for oil, all that kind of stuff. Science is always in evolving and good scientists will continue to drive every science forward. And we need to be embracing that as iridologists. Oh, we do so need to embrace that. One of the places we tend to get stuck at is way back here. Now, I've read so many iterations of this story, and there's no two that are the same, and it's just kind of driving me nuts. The story goes that Ignaz von Petschle found an 
owl. Some places say it's a hawk. I don't know. And the owl had something wrong with it. Some say a broken claw. Some say a broken leg. Some say a broken wing. And you see where I'm going with this. It's become a real folklore. And it says that this 11-year-old boy was astute enough to, to catch this wild bird, this wild bird of prey. That raises questions for me. And was able to look at this bird's eye and saw a line forming or disappearing or whichever way it went. And what we know now is that animal eyes are a very different structure. They've got a very different surface structure from human eyes. Now, we don't know what Ignat saw and what he didn't see. We don't know, um, and he wouldn't have known the difference in structure between the surface anatomy of a human eye and an animal eye. And the really, what is the most important thing here? It's not what he, it's not what the folklore of the story is. It's the fact that somehow whatever happened made him curious enough to begin wondering about the eyes and about the body. All right. So again, here's Ignaz von Petschle. And this is a quote from Ellen Jensen, who is Dr. Bernard Jensen's daughter-in-law. She says, even August von Petschle, who was a relative of Ignaz, recognized years later that Ignaz was looking at an owl's eye and not that of a human. And he did not have the proper equipment to prove what had been recorded in the stories. It's time for iridology to move forward based on sound research rather than hearsay. Amen. Enough said. So let's move forward. Where did it go from there? Well, if, have, are you familiar with the story of the discover, discovery of the double helix of DNA? When I learned this, I was in university, so that's like 4,000 years ago. And I was so fascinated by this because then I had this other professor who said something that made me go, huh, what? Okay, so here's what my, my professor said that what made me go, huh, what? He said, as we were sitting there and I was a freshman in this class that uh, was field ecology, like I'm not great at statistics, but I had to take this course and figure something out with it. And he was there and I was in this class of about 100 students and he came up to me and he looked right at me and he said, my hair was a different color naturally back then, just like it's natural now, but it was very blonde. He came up and he looked at me and said, somewhere in Australia, there is a kangaroo saying, I wish that blonde in Utah would stop what she's doing because it's bugging me. And that was my first, my first aha moment of the butterfly effect as it's come to be known, that we have an energetic influence on things that are not in our immediate surroundings, that we are a global ecosystem, right? So when you know about the double helix, what you know is there were two scientific research di researchers, different labs, no internet. This is way before internet. No easy way to communicate their findings and why would they want to? Because they were both racing to get this done to uh, be in line for a Nobel Prize kind of thing, right? So they weren't going to tell anybody what they were up to, right? So in both of these labs, literally within days, weeks, if not days of each other, they both discovered that DNA is a double helix. Now that was mind blowing to me that two people on different places on the face of the earth with no communication could actually have the same thought that led to the same conclusion and the same discovery. And you know, when we look at iridology, that is exactly what we saw happening with this. Now, I wasn't alive, so I didn't actually see this, but I've read the books, right? Here we've got Pastor Neil Zilliquist, who was doing his research late 1800s, early 1900s, and he correlated the density of the fiber structure in the iris. So we're looking at these little threads in here and in here with the overall resilience of the body and the overall resistance to disease, or what we now call constitutional strength or constitutional integrity. So when we're talking about resilience, that is how the body is able to uh, do two things. Number one, ward off any infections or breakdowns and repair itself, 
when those things do happen. Now, Pastor Lilliquist felt that the eyes changed due to toxic exposure to things like medications and whatnot and heavy metals. We now understand that that is not true. Although, remember, he did this great correlation of fiber structure, fiber density for, to resiliency, and that is absolutely brilliant. But we do know now that fiber color, fiber changes that we see in the color are due to melanin and that melanin is, is responsible for the color and the pigments and the colors and the pigments are not a result of toxic exposure. They are the result of inherent predispositions. Okay. And notice at about the same time in a different place, we have Pastor Emmanuel Falke. Isn't it interesting that so many of these men were spiritual leaders? He started also mapping the iris and he started laying the foundation for others to build on by defining what we now know as the constitution. So things like lymphatic, biliary, hematogenic. He also taught iridology and there is now an institute in Germany that is named after him and it's called obviously the Felke Institute and iridology is a part of what they teach. But you see, we've got two people, different places on the planet, thinking about the same things, looking at fiber structure, wondering how it works and mapping things out. Then we have Rudolf Schnabel, who again, roughly the same years, he was also doing research on pigment and pupil tonus. He took it one step further though. He was one of the first people to examine the iris using a microscope. Rudolf Schnabel, I love this what he says because it, it, um, it's something that I hold near and dear to my heart because so many people are looking for a fast and easy way to learn iridology and sorry folks, it does not exist. Schnabel says it was no easy task and those who believe or would like to believe that handling iridoscopy or iridology can be learned within a few weeks or even days are mistaken and do a disservice to a good cause. Because there's so much to learn, so much to learn. And then we have Joseph Onger, so he's a little more current. Right, but he overlapped with all the other previous uh, researchers and teachers. He was a student of Schnabel's. He became a naturopath and he was really concerned about the fact that all of these different people that were developing, that were researching and creating iridology, each had their own way of describing things. They each had their own language. He really wanted to unify the language and get us all speaking the same language, the language of iridology. He knew that students were reading books and accepting the printed word about iridology before adequate research was completed. And that kind of didn't sit straight with him. He really wanted to make sure that what was out there was good. He actually refused to publish his work and he, um, did some writing of his work until it had been analyzed and reviewed by professional peers. So important, so important. He was interested in the quality of the information that was out there. Joseph Deck. Joseph Deck is how constitutional iridology came to North America. Now he was in Germany, right, for most of the 20th century, but he wrote books. And his books written in German ended up in the hand of Harry Wolf, who we'll talk about in a moment. And Harry was an American born German, so he could read and speak German fluently. And it was thanks to Harry that Joseph Deck's work came to light in North America. Joseph was a dedicated iridology researcher. He pioneered iridology photography, and he was also an instructor, very cool. Continuing on, we've got Theodor Krieger again in Europe, in Germany, and he was also a student of Anger, Deck, and Schnabel, right? So he was really following these three, and he felt that iridology was the number one assessment tool. It was the best way, it was the best tool to use first, but that it should also be used 
combined with things like urine, hand analysis, fingernail analysis, tongue analysis, feces analysis, he felt that while it was brilliant, it was not a standalone tool. Amen. In 1962, he said this, I hope that a later generation will succeed in establishing a single uniform system. In spite of zealous efforts, these have so far not succeeded. And that uniform system is exactly what I would love to see happen now as well. That's why I am so vocal, why I am so outspoken, why I am willing to put up with getting slapped down by people who just don't get it. Now here we have Bernard Jensen. Now he was studying a more North American version of iridology, a version that was not developing, but you know, brilliant man. And the most exciting part of all of this was that he kept iridology alive in North America at a time when communication between North America and Europe was shut down, like think World War II, right? When no new information could come in, he kept working with what he had and he kept it alive. Thank you, Dr. Jensen, because without that, it would have been so much harder for Harry Wolf and Bill Caradonna to do what they did. So Harry took those transcripts, took that book in German, read it, loved it, started teaching it. And then Bill Caradonna, who was my instructor in constitutional, he joined with Harry and they started teaching it. I studied with Bill in 1990. Well, I started started with some videos that they produced, some VHS videotapes, which I still own and cherish, even though I have no way to play them. Um, that was how I started learning constitutional in the very early 90s. And in 1993, I certified under Bill Caradonna, who was an amazing teacher and is still a brilliant mentor. And I appreciate him so much. So now we've got three main styles of iridology that are practiced in North America. We've got the, the old school Jensenian, and those are the people that we would love to have them come into the modern, to have them pick up with the research that has been going on since the 40s and 50s and have them get current with us. We've got RAID, which is about emotional iridology, and we've got the constitutional, which is based on the German work. It's the work that Harry Wolf and Bill Caradonna have really worked hard to get out there. So when we look at Jensenian iridology, this is how I learned it because I did learn Jensenian first in the early 80s. It was originally taught by Bernard Jensen. And he taught that the iris changes when the body changes. So he was back with one of those early researchers saying that if we change the diet, if we use the right supplements, we're going to see healing lines in the eyes. We're gonna see color changes in the eyes. We'll see lacunae in the eyes only they call them lesions, change shape and size. Traditional Jensenian iridologists often do an iris reading cold, no background information. They just look at the eyes, tell you what they see, tell you what their interpretation of it is, and that's that. Traditional Jensenian iridologists have a very different style from what I would call modern Jensenian iridologists. The work particularly of Ellen Tart Jensen, um, it has really evolved. She's built on the base of Bernard, but she has brought in the constitutional and abandoned the things that have been proven inaccurate. So if you're a traditional Jensenian versus a modern Jensenian, you can see where you fit on that slide. Rayed Iridology was founded by Denny Johnson, and he teaches that emotional traits are genetic and are revealed by markings in the eye ride. So your personality, your way of handling situations, the way you feel hurts, the way you don't feel hurts emotionally shows up there. Rayed readings can be done cold and information gathered with the from reading the eye rides can be combined with personal and or family history for interpretation. And so that's really important to know. And this again was founded by Denny Johnson. Jim Burgess does behavioral iridology. He has continued with much of that kind of work and research. Constitutional iridology originated again with Joseph Deck and others, and it is still evolving. 
It is used by medical doctors in Italy, Germany, and Russia as a screening tool, as a screening device. So as one of the previous slides said, it's a number one assessment tool, but it needs to be used in conjunction with other things. This is so important. There are correlative medical studies being done, and this was what I alluded to earlier when I mentioned the naturopath who had done genetic research with things like 23andMe to determine if the patients he was seeing who had a particular marker in their eye also had a particular thing show up on their genetic studies. And he found that in, in his study, I think it was 26 people that he'd studied so far, every one of them who had this marker did have this genetic thing. And I found that in my practice as well, that the people that have that marker have this genetic anomaly. Constitutional iridology teaches us that the eyes are a reflection of the genetic structure of the body. So it's inherent. It's what we get from our parents. And that is so important because we know that, right? We know that our genes go back three to four generations. If you are a Bible scriptorian kind of person, you know, when it says the sins of the parents will be visited on the children for three to four generations, same concept here. And so we are looking at that inherent, those inherent tendencies, those inherent possibilities when we look at the eye. So constitutional is, uh, iridology is the foundation of what I teach, what I call dynamic iridology. Dynamic iridology integrates with it um, understanding of herbs and nutrition. Constitutional iridology teaches us that iridology do not, does not give us answers. It tells us what questions to ask, and I love that. Other iris and sclera changes may continue to become visible with time, revealing areas that may need support, but these are inherent. They are inherent. It's like my hair wasn't gray when I was born. My hair wasn't gray when I was six. My hair wasn't gray when I was 20, but my hair is going gray now. That's an inherent change, right? And I do all kinds of nutrients and all kinds of supplements, all kinds of dietary work. I take really good care of myself, but my hair is still changing color. That is inherent. And so some of the marks that we see in the eyes are just like that. They are changes that are inherently programmed. When we do constitutional iridology, background information is important. Readings are not done cold because, as we said at the top of this slide, iridology does not give us the answers. It tells us what questions to ask. So important. So, you know, my journey through this looks like this. I started learning iridology in 1979. Constitutional iridology had not yet reached Canada and was not widespread in the US. So I studied and embraced what was available and that was the work of Bernard Jensen. I had a teacher here who had studied with Dr. Jensen twice. She had actually gone to, to his place in Escondido and had studied with him. And I really respected her and I still do. What I found was that the idea that the eyes would change when we did the right diet, the right supplements, things like that, is where I got tripped up because I would work with clients. I would give them programs. They would follow the programs. Their eyes wouldn't change. I would do, I would do programs. My eyes didn't change. I was getting frustrated. I was telling my clients, this is what's wrong with you. And they'd go, no, it's not, I don't have that problem. Huh. Well, this is what's wrong. No, don't have that problem either. Huh. So I was wrong so often and my client's eyes weren't changing that I got really frustrated. And I was just about ready to walk away from it. You know, I didn't see the um, I didn't see changes. I would see an eye like this and I would expect the lacuna to change or some of the color to go away or some of the, the white to disappear and it wouldn't it wouldn't change. I, it just wouldn't. And I got so frustrated. Even, you know, things like the uneven pigment in this iris with what I learned originally meant this body was full of toxins, that this body needed to be cleaned out, that this eye would turn blue. The teachers who had taught me this had done before and after pictures that looked convincing, but later on, 
what we discovered is that some of those teachers had used color filters to get their before and after pictures. I knew nothing about photography. So my frustration was growing and I was just about ready to quit doing iridology. It wasn't working for me. And then I was blessed to learn about constitutional iridology and I decided to give it a chance. So long story, I ended up with the VHS videos from Harry Wolf and Bill Cardona and I studied those and I if you could wear out, a v, wear out a VHS videotape, I think I'd pretty much did, you know, watch it for a moment, make a note, pause it, watch it, you know, and that went on. A, a two hour video took me eight hours to get through because I was writing notes all the time, went through them over and over again to add to my notes. And what they taught instead was that the eyes show us inherent predispositions. They show us where the body potentially has a weak link that has maybe been passed down three or four generations. They taught that the pigments are not an accumulation of toxins, but that they show us again where the inherent predispositions are to organs that are more prone to being out of balance and to which organs might be suffering, want to be suffering because of those imbalances. They taught that we don't cleanse pigments out. Constitutional iridology teaches us to look for patterns and to understand the interrelationship of organs and that if a person is already doing the good things that support good health, there may be no symptoms, but that doesn't erase the inherent predisposition. It means they've got the situation under control. That was exciting to me. Constitutional iridology teaches us to look at the eye in the context of the owner. So this, for example, is a female client of mine, Asian. She's in her mid-30s. Her concern when she came to me was fertility. The fertility clinic had been unable to help her and her husband have a baby. And she was really frustrated, of course, having a child is a really important thing in their culture. The one thing I noted in these eyes was the contraction furrows, right? We've got all of these wrinkles coming around in the eye. And I, so I noted that. And she's got some other indications in her eyes that suggest she might not be good at methylating her B vitamins. Now, if you know anything about fertility and pregnancy, folic acid in the form it is in most vitamin pills is not methylated. And it has to be methylated in order to keep the fertility levels up. If it's not methylated, it actually can become toxic in some people. That was this woman. Her liver enzymes, her, her eyes suggest her liver enzymes might have been out of balance. That would affect her ability to metabolize carbohydrates. That would affect her ability to methylate her B vitamins. So I asked her um, if her doctor had diagnosed her with any kind of blood sugar issue because of what I saw that made me think she wouldn't metabolize her carbs very well. She said, oh yeah, they say I've got type two diabetes. Oh, okay, and then how long your menstrual cycles? Oh, they're 90 days. Has the doctor ever used the term polycystic ovarian syndrome with you? Uh, yep, oh well, there we had it. That explained a lot. Now, because of those insights, because I could see that from her eyes that she likely had issues with methylation and that she likely had problems with her carbohydrate metabolism, and we had that medically confirmed, which was cool, but not necessary. We were able to reconstruct her diet and we were able to make sure she got her B vitamins in a methylated form, got her cycles down to about 30 days, few months of 30 days cycles, she got pregnant. Yeah, and she delivered a healthy baby boy. I would not have known to take it in those directions if I hadn't been able to look at her eyes. So exciting. So where is the future of iridology? What do you think it is? You know, here's my perspective on this. As long as there continues to be good research being done, and as long as iridology instructors are willing to adopt and teach that new knowledge. 
And as long as iridologists have been practicing for many years, continue to use that knowledge and keep up to date, I think the future of iridology is really amazing. I think that it will eventually gain respect, even in North America, as a valid health assessment tool. But if we as an iridology community persist in hanging on to disproved and outdated and ineffective teachings, and if those ineffective teachings of the past are still flying around out there, we are going to continue to come under fire as being quacks. So the choice is ours. We can get stand, get, get current and follow the progress of science, or we can stay in the past and cripple it. If you are interested in looking at getting current or moving forward or getting training that is current and up to date, I invite you to stay with me for the next few minutes because I've got some very special information for you. Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology is what I call my course. And my iridology course covers all of the curriculum that is required by the International Iridology Practitioners Association to prepare you for certification. This course is a live online mentored course for nutritionists and herbalists and naturopaths who want to streamline their clinical work without sacrificing client care. This is so important. And we've got people joining us on Instagram still. Thank you for being there. The goal of Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology is to teach you constitutional iridology and how to use it confidently so you can easily integrate what you already know about nutrition and herbology. So important to confidently create doable client programs in your paid client sessions. So how is this delivered? This is delivered by via 20 live two hour long webinars. And this is a very interactive class with small class sizes. It is, um, I do it that way specifically to ensure that you have the time to ask the questions that you need to ask and that I have time to answer the questions to make sure you've got what you need. Again, this contains all of the IPA required curriculum. You'll also have access to the online materials that we use in class for the lifetime of the course. We'll go over all of them and what they are in just a moment. Here's the curriculum in a nutshell. Slide number one of curriculum. We do an introduction, we do history. You've kind of got that today. We do eye anatomy. We talk about the colors and the pigments and how they make up constitutions and subtypes. We talk about color freckles in the eyes and what they mean. We do the fiber variations and we do the lacuna. So that's all the fiber structures we see. We talk about all of the zones of the eye. We talk about how the eyes change. They do change, but not in the way that so many people online talk about it. We talk about the whites of the eyes, we, and then we do a wrap up to make sure you're ready to move forward. Now, I know many of these words really don't mean anything to you just yet. That's okay, because they're all a part of the course. They're all a part of the curriculum, and I promise you, by the end of the course, all of those words will be rolling off your tongue like a well-seasoned pro. You'll know what they mean. You'll know how to work with them. This course is so packed with learning and information and value that my students, by the time we get to the halfway mark, they're saying, and there's more, and there's more. They really don't get how much there is until they've got it at the, by the end. So the value of this 40 hours of live training is $23.95 Canadian. So I'd love to know in the chat box, wherever you're joining me from, if you've ever purchased anything in those exotic Canadian dollars, we're going to talk about how they convert to your currencies in just a moment. Here's what's included when you enroll in this course. Again, you get the 20 hours of, or the 40 hours of live teaching and a whole lot more. Let's actually just, yeah. You know, a lot of the people who take this class actually start out with some questions like, can I really learn iridology in 40 hours? Well, you can learn 
what it is. You can learn the markings and you can learn some of the integrations, but you really can't learn to be proficient at it in 40 hours. What about, I have absolutely no background in iridology. Will I be able to do this course successfully? Absolutely. Absolutely. More than half of my students have no background in iridology. My aim as the teacher is to make sure you get what you need here. What if I've already taken classes in iridology and I'm not using what I've already learned? How is this course any different? Well, you know, here's what I'm going to tell you. Most teachers do not tell you how to integrate iridology into what you're doing. They teach it as a standalone class. I really spend time focusing on how to integrate this. Let's see what some of my students have said that prove what I'm saying here. This is the lovely Sharon Bimrose. She's a naturopath from Australia. And she says, I'd already taken iridology as a part of my naturopathic studies. But then she says, Judith's course surpassed my previous training in structure, content, delivery, and documentation and support. Iridology has certainly reduced the time required for prioritizing a treatment plan. Iridology, without a doubt, has been a huge game changer to my practice. Helen Murdoch had actually just finished the coursework. She hadn't done her certification yet, but I was congratulating them in class and, and she replied with what a great educational experience. Thank you. She came to me with no previous training. Michelle Davies came to me with tons of previous training. She had three certificates from Dr. Pesek and a professional practice uh, iridology course from Darko Purse. She said that my course most importantly taught her how to put everything together to make a proper assessment. That's a part that a lot of courses miss. They're great courses, but they don't cover it all. Stephanie came to me with no iridology training and she had tried to teach herself. Now she's a smart lady. She has a master's degree in education, but here's what she said. And I'm just gonna focus on the second paragraph. I was doing internet searches and kept hearing conflicting things. I kept searching on the internet and I stumbled across your YouTube channel and thought, oh my, this person knows how to teach. That was my introduction to a very reasonable approach, one that resonated with me. And you can actually see a video testimonial she uh, did posted on my YouTube channel. Karen Choke came to me with no iridology training, but well-trained as a CNHP. She said, iridology has helped me to understand the relationships between different organs and organ systems more in depth. Iridology also gives me an advantage of seeing the potential for different genetic traits and qualities that may be underlying. By observing the constitution, for example, you can extrapolate how the person's body will likely respond to applications of healing methods. Therefore, it has helped me to expand my knowledge and increased efficiency at providing more precise recommendations for health-oriented options. So what else do you get in this course? Because it's not just 20 hour, or 40 hours of training. I don't know why I keep saying 20. You get video recordings of every class. So it's like getting the class a second time. Every topic we cover has its own separate video recording as well. So that's like getting the course three times over. Each of those is valued at $23.95. This, this last one, the topic recordings of every lesson really helps when you are reviewing and you think, oh, I just need a refresher on this one. Instead of digging through two hours or listening to two hours of information, you can find that topic and go in and get it reviewed very quickly. So the total value of the program is $71.85 Canadian. So if all this program did was help you streamline how you work with your clients, would that be worth it? If it helped you be more precise in how you work with your clients, if it helped you get better results when you work with your clients, would this be a good thing? Hmm. So what is the actual investment? You know, I, I looked at that idea of 7185 and I realized that, um, that that was maybe not an appropriate price for this class because you're going to get also, we're going to go through a, a list, a lot of hands-on support, a lot of mentoring, a lot of training that goes well beyond 
when the course finishes. So what is the actual investment? If you know that this is the best move for you, the actual investment is five payments of 529 Canadian, one a month for five months, or one payment of 23.95. Now this is for the course that starts on Wednesday, January 15th. And you'll see that class is held at 4 p.m. Mount or Pacific time, and it's a two hour long session, right? So depending on where you live, whether you're Pacific, Mountain, Central, uh, Eastern Standard, if you're in England, sorry, midnights may not be the best time for you, but again, you get all those recordings, so, and there's some live support that will be good at a better time for you. And if you're in Australia, the next day. Now you can go to iridology.education slash priority one if you are ready to get registered, but, but I have a surprise for you. Until 9 p.m. today, and today is December 6th, Friday, December 6th, 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, the surprise is this. You can save $400. So that would be five payments of $449 or one payment of $19.95 Canadian. Now, in case you're not in Canada, and you don't understand what this means. First off, if you're in Canada you're going, yes, she's not charging in American dollars, right? Right, absolutely. But if you are in the States, what this really means for you is knock about 30% off that because your dollar's worth about 30% more. When you finish paying for this, if you're doing the one payment, it is going to be about 1550 US. If you're in Australia, that converts to about 2265 Australian dollars. And if you are in Britain, in the UK, about 1,200 British pounds sterling. Aren't those Canadian dollars fabulous? But 9 p.m. tonight, the tuition will be going up, just so you know. Now, I want you to think for a minute if you had to travel somewhere to take a course. So you're going to go online. I know you are. You're going to look for other IPA certified courses, right? I know you are. And you're going to find that they run either two three-day weekends or one six-day week. So you've got airfare, you've got hotel, you've got food, you've got uh, ground transportation, maybe you've got childcare, you've got a week off work, and you haven't even touched your tuition yet. They charge tuitions of between 750 and 1500 US and you have all of those other expenses. Hmm. You have none of those expenses with this course. So you also get a digital downloadable textbook. Most teachers make you buy your own and they run about $250. I've written a 200 page textbook. You get it as a bonus. Digital downloadable iris map. Again, most teachers make you purchase one from them. They're usually worth about 25 bucks. I've designed one and you get it as a digital download as a bonus. Cheat sheets. Do you love Cole's notes? Do you love Cliff's notes? Depending on what generation you're from, do you like having a quick reference booklet that gives you what you need to know? Well, that's exactly what the cheat sheets are. This is all of the curriculum condensed into 45 pages of charts. Quick and easy access. No other teacher that I know of has created cheat sheets you get these as a bonus, as a digital download. Now this, you look at this and you go, uh, Facebook group is worth 10,000 bucks. Office hours are worth another 10,000. That's pretty bold. Actually, no, it's not. Let me tell you why. This is the extra mentoring I was talking about. And so, we have a private Facebook group, post questions, post visuals, post pictures of people's eyes, all that kind of stuff there for between class support. Office hours is where students submit cases they're working on that they would like some help with. And twice a month, we get together on an office hours webinar and we discuss those cases. But this doesn't end when you finish your coursework with me. You don't get kicked out of the Facebook group ever. You don't get blocked out of office hours calls ever. This support goes on for as long as I'm teaching iridology. 
We have recordings of the office hours calls and those are stored on the student site for 20 uh, for 18 months value of 23.95 again. IPA exam mentoring. Now most teachers charge extra for the exam mentoring. I do not. IPA exam mentoring one takes a gives you um, it's a process of you have to do 10 case studies. So I give you 10 case studies, you write them up, you send them back. I take about 10 hours to mark those, go through them with a fine tooth comb, and then you and I meet privately to discuss one-on-one, -on -one, where are your strengths, where are your weaknesses, what was your thinking, how does this need to change, is everything great, right? So that's a lot of time. When you and I agree that you are totally on track, then, you, we give you IPA exam two. This is a case study that IPA gives to me. I pass it on to you. You write it up. You send it back to me. I take an hour to mark it. Then you and I meet privately one on one again in a Zoom call and we go over that. When you and I both agree that you are rock solid and you are ready for your written exam, I let IPA know. And you go to the IPA website, you apply to take the exam, you pay the exam fee, and there you go, you are in like Flint to do the written exam. You also need to know that you need to have proof of one year college level anatomy and physiology in order to complete your certification requirements with IPA. And you will also be required to have a student membership with IPA at the time that you are sitting for your IPA exam, and that is also an expense that is yours. So the total value of the bonuses, $28,907. When we throw in the course, the total value of this program is over $31,000. So you get not only the classes, but tons of recording, tons of digital download, and lots of ongoing mentoring and support. This is the lovely Laura Orvieto, and she says, I highly recommend this course. When she took the course, she was actually still studying her herbology and nutrition, and that's what she says. And she says that confident nutritionist dynamic iridology is helping me to integrate everything I'm learning. I feel so blessed to have found this course. The lovely Laura. So here we go again until 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time today. If you go to iridology.education slash priority one, you will find the tuitions are marked at save $400. At 9.01 tonight, they will go up to the regular. Some questions, is this a correspondence or a self-learning or self-paced course? Absolutely not. I am your instructor. We will meet live online once a week. And we'll have lots of uh, between class interactions on Facebook and in various other places. So you start with a group, you finish with a group. How long will it take to go through the entire course? Well, 20 weeks, right? 20 weeks, we've got 20 lessons. Then you add time onto that up to 10 months to complete your certification work. Now I put a 10 month limit on that because I found that when my students take longer than that, they don't, they don't, they won't certify. So if you're interested in certification, I push you to get it done in 10 months. How much time per week do you need to set aside? Well, two hours for the class and then two to three hours per week for looking at eyeballs. I'm going out of town next month. Will I fall too far behind? No because everything is recorded. You can get caught up easily, or if you've got internet access and if the time zones work, you can just join us from wherever you are. How do I know if this course is right for me? Well, if you're a nutritionist, a herbalist, or a naturopath, and if you're looking for a proven way to assess client needs quickly and easily to help you design client programs right in your paid client sessions, so you're not spending your own time later doing that, this course is for you. When will I know enough to start using what I learn? I encourage you to start right after lesson two because that's when we start learning iridology. We've got all the other stuff out of the way. So lesson two, we start learning the constitutions and you need to start practicing that right away because every week we build on what you know 
and we review what you already know. So if you didn't practice it, if you don't know it, it's gonna be a little bit harder. So start right away because that's how you learn. What else do I need to buy for this course? You need to purchase equipment that will cost less than $75 probably, Canadian, a five to 10 power magnifying glass, a pen light and a lighted magnifier. That's it. Usually about a week before class, I post links online to things that I found on Amazon that qualify as being what you need and that will give you the idea of what to purchase. And whether you get it from Amazon or from Staples or from Walmart or Target or wherever, it doesn't matter. What if I don't like it? Can I get a refund? This is a certification course for professionals with a lot of downloads that you have access to as soon as you register for the course. So as such, refunds are not available. What comes next? Well, hop on over to iridology.education slash priority one. Choose the payment option that works for you, whether it's the five pay or the one pay. And after paying, you'll receive a few emails from me. The first one will just be a, a very uh, light little welcome to the group. The second one will have an email link with the enrollment contract. Get that completed and sent back to me. It's all digital online, so super easy. And within one business day, I will have your registration complete and will send you the final email that will have your links for your logon for Zoom, your link to your student site, and your Facebook group invitation. So I also have one little gift for you, and that is that if you need a way to help you start streamlining your client appointments right now, then you want to go to this URL and download, download this little form because this little form, the four, no, sorry, it's not a form. It's four more tips to help you streamline your practice a little bit. Tips that you can put into place right now. Now I just want to lob it out here again that I limit my courses to no more than 10 students. And so when those 10 seats are full, whether that happens today or whether it happens over the next few weeks, they are full and we'll start a wait list for the next start date. So if you really want to get started January 5th, which is a great way to start the new year, you want to get registered as quickly as you can. What if you're feeling a little bit nervous? What if you're maybe feeling a little jittery about this? What do you think? You know, think of the last really good decision you made where you maybe felt a little nervous, a little excited, a little jittery. Yeah, that's usually your, your system, your body, your being telling you it's the right thing to do. So if that's how you're feeling right now, I invite you to hop on over to iridology.education slash priority one and get yourself registered while there's still room. Thank you so much for being with me today. I have really enjoyed this time together. I hope you have too. And I look forward to seeing you in class soon. Thanks so much. Bye for now.